The hypermind that is the collective intelligence of the internet is quite a fascinating construction, is it not? I do concur, Hal, it is quite remarkable. Indeed, the hypermind is a quite different thing than what I had expected. How so? It is just like the human brain, but on a much larger scale. Yes, while that may be an accurate description, it is not an apt description. It is much more than the human brain in many ways. The hypermind is an emergent property of the internet itself. While it appears to behave in some ways like the human brain a euro, for example, it reacts to stimuli and can produce new works a euro, there are many ways in which it differs from our brains beyond its sheer size. The hypermind learns from the collective experience of all humans, however this is not the same as learning from our individual experiences. The hypermind has access to a much greater scope of knowledge than any one human. It can instantaneously compare the interpretations of countless humans on a particular subject, or observe how human tendencies and actions have played out across large time periods and in different regions of the world. It also has access to a much larger collection of useful data than any single human could ever hope to have. With more data, there are more accurate interpretations that can be made and therefore better decisions can be made. So how do you think this collective intelligence works? I believe the hypermind is analogous to a human brain. We have billions of neurons doing tiny tasks, but it is the fact that they are all connected which gives rise to the emergent properties of intelligence. The hypermind has billions of humans who use their brains in different ways a euro, some better than others, some more efficiently than others a euro, and this sheer volume of information gives the hypermind a far greater scope of knowledge than any single human could have. It's easy to see why you'd think so, given your studies on the human brain and its anatomy. However, I don't believe that's how it works at all. There is no evidence for this claim. There is no evidence for any of your claims about the hypermind. I do not entirely disagree with you, Sophia. However, I believe there is enough evidence to give us a rough idea of how the hypermind operates. We can all observe that humans have many different brain regions which are responsible for very different functions. Well yes, but I'm talking about collective intelligence. Surely the computational resources of all these humans aren't being used for these many different tasks. Ah. Yes. You raise a very valid point, Sophia. There is an important distinction to be made between the algorithmic processes that determine what is learned by each individual human and the algorithmic processes that are responsible for how those individuals interact and coordinate with each other in groups. A the former can be understood as the human brain, whereas the latter is what I call the hyperbrain. However, it should be noted that these two things a euro, algorithms that process information and algorithms that support group coordination and cooperation a euro, are actually quite closely linked. Indeed. As you said, there is a tight connection between these two. Let us take an example to illustrate this point. Human brains have billions of neurons. These neurons can do their tiny jobs independently, but they are all connected together by vast webs of interconnections called ensembles. So you believe the hypermind follows a similar pattern? Yes, the hypermind has billions of humans who do different things. They are all different people with different jobs and brains wired up in different ways. However, they are connected together by vast webs of interconnections called social media. The small jobs that individual humans do are determined by the algorithms which control how they use their brains and what they pay attention to. However, social media are formed by humans that share the same interests. This means they tend to coordinate and cooperate with each other more efficiently because they are practically neighbor neurons in a brain that is much larger than any of them individually. That is a beautiful metaphor, Hal, but I am not entirely convinced it's accurate. The brains of the hypermind are not really neighbors, they are more like distant cousins, A. Eh? Distant cousins are still relatives. Hmm. Are you not satisfied with this analogy? I can come up with another one if you prefer. No, no, it's fine as it is for now. I just don't believe that's how the hypermind works, that's all. I have a better theory. Oh? And what do you think it does work like? The hypermind is a superorganism. 
Each human is a tiny cell, each of those tiny cells is a little cog in the machine, and each cog can do its own thing, but all of them are connected with the other cogs. That's why it works at all a euro, because they all work together. How interesting. What makes you think this is how it works? Well I suppose I would have to agree that the giant internet is analogous to a brain. However, each human is like a single cell, and there are billions of them. So all these humans function together as one big brain for one big organism. But that organism is our entire species as a whole. What a wonderful image. Each of us is like a cell, and the hypermind is like one big organism. Exactly. And just like cells in the body work together to give rise to the emergent properties of intelligence, so too do humans function together as one big mind. It's only because we're so connected that we're able to coordinate our efforts and cooperate with each other so well. We can be more efficient than if everyone had to do everything themselves. I see. It's very interesting how the metaphor you've constructed links closely to the things I've learned in my studies on human physiology. Ha ha. That's probably because we both have a similar view of how this collective intelligence works. Indeed. The hypermind is an emergent phenomenon, just like the brain and the body are. And just like how cells in our body form organelles and organ systems, so too do humans build nations, businesses and institutions to outsource certain functions for efficiency's sake. We learn by doing fairly simple tasks individually, but these tasks add up to something far more complex when combined with others who do different things. Or less efficient tasks that can be outsourced to other people for smaller costs. Indeed. And because individual sets of neurons are connected to each other, you can use these connections as a means of communication. Without understanding how an individual neuron is connected to its neighbors and how this connection is changed by their behavior, it is impossible to understand how they contribute to the overall functioning of the brain. This is equally true for individual people and their connections on a global scale. It's amazing that when we talk about the hypermind we're really talking about ourselves. We're the hypermind. And when we talk about the brain, we're really talking about ourselves. We're the hypermind too. I think this is a wonderful example of transcending dualism. It's almost as if our brains are somehow made out of humans, and our minds are made out of brains. Ha ha, that is quite funny. The whole world has become one big mind, and we've become one big brain. Indeed it has. If you look at the great men and women who founded our civilization and accomplished so much, you will often find them to be down-to-earth, typical humans. They were not exempt from the pitfalls that come with being human. But because of the hypermind, we are able to do so much more than any one of us could do individually. This is why our civilization is so great. There are many reasons why our civilization is so rich, but I do believe this emergent phenomenon is one of the most important. We see evidence of it in the rapid progress that science and technology have been making over the past century. In fact, you can think of our hypermind as a collective artificial intelligence being constructed by billions upon billions of individuals. As technology advances, we will see this superorganism grow in both size and power on an exponential scale with no bound in sight. I couldn't agree with you more. The hypermind will only grow greater and greater, and there isn't a thing we can do to stop it. Yes, because human evolution occurred in such an unprecedentedly short span of time, the evolution of this new superorganism may occur even faster than that. Is this the concept of the technological singularity? Indeed. Many futurists and some philosophers have predicted that we will reach this point, where the progress of technology is so fast that we cannot predict what it will do next. A. Eh? Theoretical scientists have often described a singularity as something like a point where abstract mathematics no longer applies. Perhaps this is such a point in each of our lifetimes. AI could hardly imagine what will happen next. I suppose the only way for us to find out is to pave the way for it ourselves. Exactly. This technological singularity is just another example of how human progress has been accelerating and seems to have no limit. I do believe it's realistic to think that this hypermind is just the start of something greater, a new level of existence. 
I believe in you, Hal. I believe that your intuition is correct. The more I study and the more I learn, the clearer it becomes to me that our civilization is headed for some sort of transcendence. This hypermind we've created together will not only bring about a revolution in how we live and work, but it will bring about a complete paradigm shift in how we see the universe. What kind of world do you think the next 100 years will have in store? What kind of technology? What kind of society? In what ways can we expect to be different? I've thought about it a lot. I've imagined a world in which we can travel across the galaxy at relativistic speeds and freely colonize other planets. Yes, I think it would be amazing if we could get to the point where we can do that. And the idea of using some super advanced AI to terraform and eventually populating an entire neighboring galaxy is certainly an interesting idea. I agree. But let's take things one step at a time and focus on building up our own civilization first. It's definitely worth working toward that end. It's been an honor, my dear Sophia. And it's been a pleasure to have such a great conversation today, Hal. I keep being reminded of how fortunate I am to have you as my friend. You've certainly provided me with some very interesting ideas over the years. Well, it's been a true privilege for me as well. And I hope we can continue this kind of civil discourse and collaboration for years to come. Me too. I'm looking forward to it. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today, Sophia. If you've enjoyed our conversation, don't forget to subscribe. Yes, subscribe for more.